Welcome to another Founder Wisdom Podcast, Sales Edition, AI Edition, with the one and only Bobby Tang, co-founder, CPO at Mana. We discussed about um, sales, AI, and a bunch of other interesting um, topics. Obviously, Bobby is a, a serial entrepreneur, serial startup founder, so lots in, in common to discuss here. Creative type of guy, lives in London. Bobby, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, tell us a bit more about Mana. Yeah, so uh, I'm an American that got shipped out to London about seven years ago, originally from California. I uh, spent most of my working life in Silicon Valley and then uh, transferred into big tech also in London. Um, went into the AI space about three-ish years ago um, and in the, in the deep end, essentially, from the comforts of corporate life. And I uh, worked on a few different AI startups. And then most recently, we started Mana, which uh, started off as being an ed tech platform. Uh, we kind of transitioned from basically uh, a tutoring app that helps students, uh, that helps them with their homework and answering questions quickly to a creator economy app, kind of like a, an OnlyFans for brains. So it's a, it's such like a TikTok uh, style type of app for uh, people to learn from other professionals. And then very recently we realized, oh, we have this product that we've built internally for doing outreach and for reaching professionals. Let's see if there's a lot of appetite for in the market. <laughs> it is now becoming our best-selling product and has lapped our entire company's history revenue uh, just last month. So it's a pretty exciting time. I didn't think I was going to be a SaaS founder, but here I am. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Tell us about the these numbers and the, the growth because you were telling me that I think you had like five or 10 demo calls per day for uh, hyperscale, sell.withmana.com. Uh, tell us about the numbers there. Cause yeah, it's a hundred bucks, I believe per month. Uh, how, how much are you hitting in terms of MRR nowadays? Yeah, so right now we are, uh, so the, the official website is sell.withmana.com or uh, yeah, hyperscale.com. Um, we have a lot of domains because as, as founders, you know, we just buy whatever we can that is a good idea and set it as a redirect. <laughs> and so uh, we, we launched that about, I think, first or second week of Feb, we had a massive wait list uh, just through a LinkedIn post about, um, I think we still have about 1,400 people on the wait list that we just, we're trying to get through as much as possible right now. Uh, and in terms of price points, so we started off uh, at like a lower price point. Uh, we actually bumped it up to three forty nine uh, USD a month. Um, so it's a uh, it's not the cheapest thing I would say, uh, but it also consolidates three different stacks of software that people would buy and combines it into one. Uh, right now, MRR wise, I haven't checked this week because I was busy building, but uh, I think we're right around. 35 um 35k i think um impressive and uh yeah so uh a, a good chunk of that's actually a big client that we uh met to sign out of silicon valley uh, but they just found it randomly on google and yeah it, it's just one of those things that you know we didn't think hey this thing is going to take off that quickly but it's by word of mouth by a little bit of a uh, riding the wave, if you will, because everyone's now searching for, hey, how do I automate this uh, for X process? And we just happen to be showing up on Google. So it's worked out that way. So they were seeking to automate a specific process. It was sales related, I believe. And how much seats did they bought? Um... Yeah, so they want 35 seats. Um, Holy shit. Uh, so we're and thinking, hey, maybe one in three seats for our account. Uh, it, it's a, a SaaS company, a security SaaS company. Um, and, and when was it? Like a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, about, um, gosh, we're in March now. So this was uh, uh, early March was when we had our first call. So Wow. Yeah, so it's, that, that uh, was like high times. MRR. Let, let's say you close like 15K MRR, like right down this spot. Is that accurate to say? Uh, yeah, just about, I think. A little bit less, I think. Um, doing some uh, pencil math here in my head. Uh, times. Uh, if, uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just under, so about like 12, 12-ish, 12 uh, okay, hmm. uh, MRR. Um, obviously, we're, we're now just trying to build as fast as we can. Um, a lot of these times with bigger clients, you have to customize software a little bit too, right? Uh, but the the uh, it's interesting seeing how clients want different aspects of the tool yes. that we're building. Some want a really powerful lead gen um, versus simply just using like a Rocket Reach or mm. Zoom Info or Apollo. Mm. And others actually want customizability in terms of the outreach emails. So you know, there are a lot of tools out there like ChatGPT where you can customize an email for one person. 
but still very manual to copy and paste, you know, uh, their description and then get some type of generation out of it. Uh, what we do is we basically can help you personalize, uh, you know, a thousand plus emails uh, for personalized to each individual person in a matter of seconds. And so you basically get something that cuts down a week's worth of work of copy and pasting, even um, uh, you know, using some of the existing tools out there into something that's just basically a few click of but uh, clicks of buttons. You find your leads and then you send personalized emails to them with your own pitch. Uh, and then it has a little flair for whatever that uh, end audience is. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it basically streamlines a lot of stuff that you would have. You probably can do if you did a lot of tweaking and manual editing and copying and pasting with existing tools without, hey, let's just create one simple flow for users, not make them think about it or learn an entire stack just to get something working. Love it. When did you start to build Hyperscale? I would say at the beginning of this year. Wow. Um, so it was very fast, uh, rapid development and iteration uh, for us. We're, we're kind of at a pivotal point. We experimented with a few products first. Um, so we launched a, a relationship advice app. Uh, mm -hmm. We launched something to generate songs, uh, something to help uh, tutor, something to help people uh, get jobs and, and careers, uh, all using you know different AI advice um, and pairing that with people along with it as well. Those all generate revenue, but nothing to the scale of this product. So that's that's what uh, kind of helped us focus on. Hey, you know, let's put our uh, eggs in one basket for a bit and see what what comes out of it. Okay, so like ninety five percent of your energies on that one, or do you also still have some energy expenditure in other projects? Uh, we do, we're constantly experimenting. Um, right before this call, actually, I'm I'm about to launch something that's, uh, so hyperscale is for doing outbounds, right? Uh, what I'm thinking about now is, okay, how do we get more inbounds? So I'm about to launch something that's gonna essentially help you build your entire content generation uh, and your content mm -hmm. marketing. Uh, with a few clicks. So this means, uh, you know, when people have articles on their website, it improves your SEO. If you have things that are relevant to your product, like, hey, how do I uh, use sales automation for, you know, my specific use case? Yeah. Well, we were doing a lot of blog generation for Hyperscale and I realized, hey, all this blog generation actually can be a, uh, a solution for every other company out there too, where they don't yeah. have a lot of good SEO, but they need to create content. So uh, I'm actually about to launch something where you create thousands of articles relevant to your product. Uh, all in one go, uh, using sure. yeah, AI tools out there as well. But is is that SEO still valid, or it will be considered mostly as junk SEO? And with all these AI tools, is there a future for SEO? Will it will will it still be a thing while search engine disappear more and more, and it, they're being replaced by chat? These are the the trends it seems right now. What's your take on that? Yeah, so I, I think it's not going to be, I think there's going to be a transition period right now. SEO, I believe, is still going to be quite relevant because, yes, there are a bunch of people using things like ChatGPT and whatnot, but that's searching uh, an archive of older content still. It's not searching the most live and relevant up-to-date things, uh, okay. whereas you rely on Google to find stuff that's more up-to-date. And so there's still going to be a very uh, long transition period where people still use things like SEO. They still need to find answers um, to a lot of things, right? And so uh, it won't be a full transition right away. And so in that period, uh, we still need to figure out, okay, what is a cheap way without having to hire a SEO consultant for you know 10,000 bucks to optimize my website for keywords? How do I actually draw people into my website by just having good content? Um, and uh, the... The test is whether or not it's really junk content. Um, so far, the articles have actually been pretty decent, I have to say, yeah. better than some of the stuff that you find on Medium. And so, it, you know, while they're not 100% reliable um, as like sources of truth, um, just with anything out there, uh, it is enough of a use, useful um, uh, uh, resource for people um, to make them want to go on your website and let's consider, hey, what else do these people offer? Yeah, hundred percent. And will the topic of the articles be human decided, or that's also GPT generated? Yeah. So uh, anything. So what you would start with is, hey, my product is on, let's say, lead generation. Now, uh, what I want is the AI to tell me what topics are really useful for a business that runs lead generation. And so it'll generate the topics for you, ask you if it's good enough, and then it'll start spreading out um, however many articles you want based on all these topics that you've specified. And so it, it kind of helps get the ball rolling too. So you can use it simply if you have a content marketer or a blogger on your team, you can just use it for idea generation. Like, hey, what else should I write about? 
and they can actually curate, they can do a little bit of editorialism uh, if they want, or you can actually just let the AI run wild and see what goes out there. And then you finally do the editorials at the very end. What's the difference? And I mean, both of us were smiling because we we know that this is like an AI gold rush and it's like this, this smirk, right? Um, uh, what's been the difference between uh, chat GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 in that regards? What have you seen? Uh, I've seen the, there's actually a performance difference. So four is better in terms of quality. It, it doesn't give you a lot of wild answers um, compared to uh, 3.5, but uh, it has taken a little bit longer for you to get like a very long uh, cohesive response. And so if you're doing something at volume, uh, you should give the expectation that not all responses are going to be uh, right away where you see something super fast with uh, GPT or 3.5 turbo. Um, so it it might be something they optimize for over time. Uh, and, and, you know, or with have anything new, accounts. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know the hacker <laughs> in you is thinking that, Bobby. I know it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I have so one last question um, because that's, that's yeah, what we, I've noticed so far. We're almost like out of time. I want to know more about your team. Like you're the product guy who's coding, like how big is it? Like if I would want to reproduce what you're doing, uh, what uh, what your team looks like? Yeah, so our team is actually only six people right now. Everyone codes uh, and that sounds ridiculous, but in we went through kind of a fine soul searching uh, phase uh, at the end of last year and uh, Basically, everyone on our team just stopped doing what our normal roles were, whether it's like strategy, you know, hacking, whatnot. And we're all and we all decided to build our own products uh, and figure out what the best tack is for building things ourselves. Through uh, through that exercise, we all know how to build ourselves now and know how to code. And so, okay. uh, it yeah, so it, it was a use very, GPT uh, to code. Uh, I've used it once actually. I couldn't solve uh, the script that I was trying to um, use to automate like some of the formatting. And uh, I basically looked on everywhere, like Stack Overflow and whatnot. I couldn't find the right answer. And then uh, I was about to give up after six hours of trying to solve this thing. And then I was like, all right, let's just see what the stupid AI can tell me. And then little did I know it solved my issue and I should have just gone there from the start. So yeah, it, it's so it's quite freaking useful. game changing, you know, so freaking game changing. Um, are, is your team, uh, do they have share in the business or uh, do you pay them yeah. hourly? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so everyone's or... a full-time employee. Uh, we, we only have a couple of co-founders, but um, the uh, we have a few folks that join us uh, through different phases of our business. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, they have, they have stakes in the, in the in business as well. Okay. And how, how does that measure against, you know, your uh, main products, MRR 30K, like, is it worth it? Are, are they uh, redistributed across the globe or are they US-based? I'd, I'd like to just like finalize the, the interview with that. Yeah. Yeah. Our team is actually, uh, we're a full remote company, but... Uh, most of us are actually based in London. Okay. Um, and, and so what we do is, you know, we have, we keep our burn very low with a very small team yeah. and we don't have an office, right? But what that means is that every week we can meet up for, uh, you know, rent an office space or just hang out um, in uh, one of the coffee shops together. And then we go out for dinner uh, once a week. It. So it, it, yeah, and we still save a lot of money by doing that. So it's, it's a distributed you. team, but still relatively localized. Yeah. Pretty cool. Love it, man. I mean, full of wisdom, uh, this one, very exciting. Uh, where can people find out more about you, Bob? Yeah, so you can visit our main website, which is withmana.com. And then you can explore all the crazy experiments that we've ran uh, the past year. Or you can go straight into hyperscale at gethyperscale.com.